Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel for another Star Wars Battlefront 2 video. Today we are going to be covering more absolutely incredible creations by some of the most talented members of the community. Modding has absolutely blown up over the past month or so because it just recently became possible to import assets from other games into Battlefront 2, so we are going to be seeing a huge influx of really high quality mods in the coming months, including a few mind blowing creations today, many of which are better than some of the lesser official dice skins we have in the game. And then there are some others that are just hilarious, like last week's Gonk Droid mod. You guys seem to absolutely love last week's episode and we ended up hitting over 5,000 likes, so thank you all for that. This channel has been absolutely thriving lately. Anyway, with all that out of the way, let's just jump into the first creation we'll be covering today, the LEGO Battle Droid mod, which as you can probably figure out for yourself, replaces all of the Separatist Battle Droids with the Battle Droids from LEGO Star Wars. I wanted to start off with this one because it really holds a special place for me. I played the original two LEGO Star Wars games all the time growing up, especially the first one which was based off the prequel trilogy, so seeing anything from that game in Battlefront 2 just strikes a chord with me right away. I also just love how well this skin works, the creator went through the trouble of replicating all of the different battle droid appearances as well, so if you want to be a Geonosis or pilot battle droid, you can go right ahead and they are recolored flawlessly. In most cases this mod also replaces the blaster you're using with the lego blaster model, although for some reason certain weapons seem to override this and the battle droid will just hold the regular battlefront 2 blaster. Overall this mod is amazing and that's not where it ends, because we also have a lego yoda. Lego Yoda has become a bit of a meme in the past couple of years, and you can now play as him in Battlefront 2. If possible, this one works even better than the Battle Droid mod, there aren't really any sizing issues at all as Yoda is already tiny. This one also gives Yoda a custom hero portrait which is always appreciated, and man would this be a fun event type skin for Battlefront someday. DICE would probably never add anything like this, as I know for a fact there would be people upset about how immersion breaking it would be, which is understandable, but still, I would love it. I will probably rock this mod online pretty much all the time from here on out, at least when I'm playing on PC. Yoda has always been one of the heroes I rarely play as. I'm not sure why, I've just always found most other heroes way more fun to go on streaks with, but with this mod I'll definitely be using Yoda a lot more. Moving on, I wanted to quickly show you guys an update to the Plo Koon mod from last week. Some of you guys were extremely upset in the comments, because in the mod the creator gave Plo Koon a blue lightsaber, which I was under the impression was his canon lightsaber color. So I looked it up because I was curious, and as it turns out that is true, blue is his canon lightsaber color. In canon, the only lightsaber Plo Koon ever used is a blue one, he uses it in Attack of the Clones on Geonosis, and in the Clone Wars series multiple times. However, and this was news to me, in Legends he has had like every color you can imagine, and it's very confusing. His episode 1 action figure was released with a yellow lightsaber, in various games he's also given a yellow lightsaber, in a few different comic books he has a green lightsaber, in later comics he has a dark orange lightsaber, and of course in the movies he has a blue lightsaber, and yes, I realize I just said lightsaber like 45 times. It's all over the place, and even in Legends there is no explanation for why he uses such a variety. Either way, another creator released a supplementary mod that gives Plo Koon a yellowish orange lightsaber for the fans that remember him with that color, and I won't lie, I kinda prefer it even if it is no longer canon. Next up, we have the Luke Skywalker mod I mentioned last week, but wasn't able to cover it because it wasn't working, but I was able to sort that all out and get it fixed. This mod replaces the default Luke appearance with his outfit from Battlefront 2015, which was a proper Return of the Jedi Luke, so the single glove and no tunic. This mod is much more subtle than the LEGO mods we just covered, but much like those, this takes advantage of mesh importing. So this isn't just Battlefront 2 Luke with the tunic and glove removed, this actually takes the model from Battlefront 2015 and imports it into Battlefront 2, and then the modder went ahead and used the younger Luke face from Farm Boy Luke and applied it to this skin, because faces just look so much better in Battlefront 2, with a few horrible exceptions, and you probably know who I'm talking about, <coughs> Ray. If you didn't play Battlefront 2015, you probably don't care too much about this skin, but I really wish DICE would add this as a common appearance for Luke, just 5,000 credits, and I would buy it in a heartbeat. I would probably use this skin almost entirely, I don't think I'd ever take it off. I think they nailed the way Luke played and his appearance in the previous Battlefront, so I would love to see this one back. Also recently released was a mod that gives Luke his Bespin appearance from The Empire Strikes Back. 
This one isn't a model import, as there just haven't been any recent games you could pull the appearance from, but is extremely well done considering the creator was only working with various existing assets. I believe the outfit itself is a recolored suit from the Vardos mission in the campaign, and this is one of those appearances that is almost criminal in not already being an official skin from DICE. Empire Strikes Back is widely regarded as the best of the original trilogy, and you would think DICE would have the appearance from Luke's first real face-to-face -face confrontation with Vader, and one of my favorite scenes in Star Wars overall. I do think Cloud City Luke is likely to be added officially one of these days, but in the meantime this is a great placeholder. Next up, I wanted to feature another mod that was pretty much created as a joke, similar to the Count Gonk mod from last week's episode. This is the Mini Trooper mod, and it does exactly what you'd think it would. It just takes all playable characters and makes them the size of an ant. Hilariously, it doesn't change the size of the hero lightsabers, so they look ridiculously out of proportion, and the UI in Battlefront 2 is so large to begin with, it obscures half the characters entirely. Still, this mod is awesome and hilarious, and when I first saw it, I was surprised this was the first time someone had done this. This week, we also have a really creative mod for the battle droids, which allows you to play as C-3PO in a sense. This mod recreates the attack of the clone C-3PO battle droid hybrid, where 3PO ends up getting his parts separated, with his upper and lower half attached to different battle droids. I'm so confused. This is one of those appearances that DICE probably couldn't ever add officially, as it just wouldn't work because only two droids were ever affected by this, both during the Battle of Geonosis. It would be super interesting to have a random player spawn in with this skin only on Geonosis, and just have it reset and go to someone else when that player dies and another respawns, but I don't think anything like that is ever happening. If you are anything like me and this mod makes you instantly want to get on your own PC and download these for yourself, Remember, I will have every single one of these, or at least the ones that are public, in the description so you guys can install these and support the creators who work really hard to get some of these out there. One of the characters that people still mourn the loss of to this day is Kyle Katarn, who was one of many fan favorites completely wiped from canon when Disney took over Star Wars. If you don't know anything about him, he was a stormtrooper turned smuggler turned Jedi Knight. The guy also stole the plans for the first Death Star and survived, so it's safe to say he was a force to be reckoned with. Because of his removal from canon after Disney took over, there's essentially zero chance we ever see him in Battlefront 2 in any official capacity, however the modding community has given us the next best thing. This mod is completely custom and replaces Luke Skywalker with Kyle, giving him an overhaul that includes an incredibly detailed and specially modeled lightsaber. This mod can be used with a green or blue blade, as Kyle used both in Legends, and this mod is just great to see. Kyle goes way back to games like Dark Forces, which came out years before I even existed, but I know him from the Jedi Knight series which has aged surprisingly well. Moving on, we have the first real attempt at giving Maul his robotic-legged appearance from the Clone Wars. This mod is an early work in progress, so no, it's not perfect, but it's still pretty fun to use online. There is also supposed to be a version without the robe, but for whatever reason that one was just not working for me. This appears to replace his legs with the lower half of the BX Commando droid, and really they look pretty great, even if they do look a bit small. I've always wondered how DICE would work in Maul's robotic legs if they ever include them as an appearance, because from what I understand they make Maul way taller. I didn't know this until just the other day, but I guess Maul was pretty dang short naturally. If you look it up, he's only supposed to be like 5'6 in The Phantom Menace, even though Ray Park is above average at 5'10. However, after his legs were replaced, he's way taller, like 7 feet or something. If you ever watch The Clone Wars, he towers over Obi-Wan, who is like 6 feet tall. I would guess DICE would just have to scale his legs down, they really couldn't change Maul's hitbox for an appearance, that would not be possible or fair. I also wanted to give a quick spotlight to an Armored Maul appearance that was released this week, which gives Maul clone armor like Obi-Wan and Anakin's. It's very cool looking and has multiple options, including robed, hooded, or neither. Not quite as cool as the skin replacing Maul's legs, but still worth a mention nonetheless. For any Rogue One fans like myself, this next mod should be right up your alley. This one imports all of the Imperial Troopers from Scarif in Battlefront 2015 into Battlefront 2 using mesh importing. The Assault class is replaced with the Shore Trooper, the Heavy with the Shore Trooper Captain, the Officer with the ACT-AT Pilot, and the Specialist with the Tank Trooper. It's a little frustrating seeing all of this very high potential content from Battlefront 2015 just not being officially utilized. 
DICE has said that using content from Battlefront 2015 is just as hard, if not more difficult than creating it from scratch, but I honestly do not really buy that. I can see why with Heroes, where they would have to go ahead and recreate the abilities, animations, and everything, but with the trooper customization, I really don't think I believe that story, and there are a ton of unused cosmetic options from Battlefront 2015, and they already copy and pasted a ton of skins earlier in the year. It truly pains me that the Scarif map from Battlefront 2015 is already sitting unused in Battlefront 2 in the campaign. It just sits there, and we never get to use it, yet we have absolutely no Rogue One representation in multiplayer. Hopefully DICE changes that sometime in the future, but in this case the mod is just as good as the official product when playing on PC. Finally, we have a mod for Rey. One really nice detail here is the name change for her scavenger appearance in the main menu. I really, really wish DICE would release an official version of this appearance. Whether or not you like the sequel trilogy, and believe me, I am understanding of both sides of that particular fence, one thing most people can relate to is the hype before The Force Awakens release. That first trailer, not the teaser, but the official trailer, the one that kicked off with Rey searching the wreckage of the Star Destroyer, was so incredible. That is still the most memorable scene with Rey to me, the introduction of her character on Jakku, and I probably watched the first Force Awakens trailer 20 times before seeing the movie. Either way, this skin is great, and I would buy an official version of it in a heartbeat. Well guys, that is going to do it for today's video. If you enjoy this series, please be sure to leave a like, and if you are new to the channel, make sure you subscribe so you never miss a future upload. We just hit 140,000 subscribers on this channel, and my goal is to hit 200k before the end of next year, and fortunately, I'm pretty confident we can do it. Thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.